thought about it more specifically that Kenya being a very progressive democracy in Africa actually gave itself the 2010 constitution which among many other things is actually to ensure that the country is managed and run well and that the citizen participation in the management of the affairs of this country is paramount. Honorable Speaker, through this constitution, we are able to have separation of powers. We have independent, uh, we independent uh, institutions, independent commissions, which all of them are actually supposed to do or to work for the good of the citizens of this republic, who are actually the owners of the powers and the owners of the the institutions that have been created by this constitution. However, the constitution has certain challenges. As it was seen in the campaigns of the 2010, uh, leading to the uh, promulgation of the 2010 constitution, there were certain groups or stakeholders who had certain misgivings, Madam Speaker, and most of them actually reached a conclusion, and a majority of Kenyans decided that let us have the constitution as it were then, but in future there will be amendments. There have been attempts, uh, Madam Speaker, that this constitution be amended severally through the, inf the infamous BBI, through a number of citizen initiatives, and even through individual initiatives by members of the public, and even the Punguza Mzigo initiative. What the President has given us in this memoranda, Madam Speaker, is quite insightful, it is quite important, and it is for this House to look into it without having a political uh, bias. Noting that the issues that the President has brought forward affects all of us. Let me just go through them in brief, Madam Speaker, and one of it is actually the issue that concerns everyone, the issue of NGCDF. Every member in this house knows that NGCDF is dear to every member of the house and to every citizen and every constituent in this country because its impact is more felt than even the devolved county government functions. What CDF has done in construction of schools, uh, clinics or even dispensaries prior to the 2010 constitution, what it has done in terms of water, what it has done in, in building of police stations and security is quite immense. The, what we need to do as a parliament is to entrench it so that it is not under attack from uh, civil society, busy bodies and those individuals who would want to bring it to an end. CDF, for those members of parliament who served here before CDF was introduced in 2002 by the government of, by the third government of President Mwai Kibaki, knows the difference which was there before and after. In the 70s and in the 80s, Madam Speaker, this country were, schools were built through Harambe's, where chiefs and assistant chiefs and administrators were getting cows by force from citizens to construct classrooms. But with the advent of CDF, you've seen that we have hundreds of thousands of students who have had scholarships, who have had bursaries, who would have otherwise not gone to school. And I think it is in the wisdom of the president that we entrench this CDF in the constitution so that it will actually live beyond the life of these members and it will can even take 100 years to come. I want to urge members that we adopt this memoranda on that basis. We also know that, Madam Speaker, that the implementation of the, the, the gender rule has been a thorn in the flesh of this House. And I think uh, in the wisdom of uh, our former Chief Justice Maraga, he asked the former President, the fourth President, to dissolve this House because it was unconstitutional. I think there have been attempts severally by the former leader of majority, Harden Duale, to try to bring in the issue of uh, gender rule. And it has failed. By, by proposing to this house that this house sits down
through its wisdom, through its mechanism, through its institution, to ensure that we entrain the two-third gender rule doesn't mean that it is only women. This time, it is women who are, and then, who have, uh, who are not able to meet the rule. But noting the development of the girl-child in the society, I know very well that in the next 10 or 15 years, or 20 years, the gender who will be disadvantaged in this house will be the men. So it is important that we are entrenched this knowing very, very well that it will reach a time when the shoe will be on the other side. And I've seen it in Rwanda, where now the majority of the members of parliament are, 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 are women. So we really need to pass this, gender, this, uh, this uh, memorandum very well, members, noting that the women who come here are our, our daughters, they are our mothers, they are our sisters, and they are part and parcel of the society. And we don't need to look at it in any other form. We also have the issue of the, the position of the official, uh, the, 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 the position of the leader of opposition. I think in the 2010 constitution, whereas the presidential candidates are not allowed to vie for parliamentary seats, it has come to the realization of all of us that parliamentary, the, the, the party leaders lead their members from outside this house. They also lead members from unofficial quarters. It is important that every opposition leader has his office, he is able to rally his troops from an official quarter where everybody knows, both in government and outside in the country, that this is an alternative government, the shadow government in waiting. So we need not to allow them to just be running their offices from the streets, to be preoccupying themselves in areas which could otherwise be done by the constitution. Two, we all know that every other member who is here, it is possible for any side to be in government in, in future or be in the opposition. So we are not building, we are not, uh, the president is not actually uh, advising for the formation of this particular office but for posterity, not for individuals, not for a certain group, it is for Kenyans. The, the, the government today is possible for them to be the opposition tomorrow. And it, the vice versa is true. So I want to ask members that as we, disc, as, as we debate this, let us look at it with sober eyes, let us look at it with open mind, knowing that we are legislated for the, for the future we are legislating for Kenyans, we are not legislating for individuals. Finally, we have the parliamentary oversight on the executive. I think one of the members that the role we do, even in our constituencies, I've seen young men critiquing majority of us in the WhatsApp groups. They have been critiquing us, maybe even through the, the vernacular media stations. Some of the critiques actually build you as a leader. It promotes your ability to work and represent them well. The same thing is for even the executive. The fact that we critique government uh, uh, officers, more so the cabinet secretaries, and even government officers and functionaries, does not mean that we want them to fail. We want them to succeed. We want them to ensure that the policies and the programs that were initiated by the Kenya Kwanzaa administration for now are able to succeed. If we shall actually go to bed with them and not critique them, that is when the electorate will actually bundle the government out of office. And I want to thank the president for being very wise and knowing that it is very important to have a powerful uh, uh, parliament that is able to critique it and make sure that it performs well. I support Madam Speaker. Asante. The Honorable Member for Westlands, Timothy Wanyonyi. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for me to speak on this motion. Madam Speaker, it is good that this motion has come back to this House after the attempt by the BBI to do almost a similar amendment that are being proposed here. Madam Speaker, through the BBI initiative, I think the only mistake that BBI did was that uh, 
there was an in exclusive element in that initiative that some quarters of the population felt excluded from the process. That is why it was opposed and it was defeated in the uh, Supreme Court, Madam Speaker. And this, uh, I propose, uh, the, the proposal from the President, Madam Speaker, is good and far reaching. And we look at how we want to create the position of the leader of opposition. The Kenyans, Madam Speaker, when they elected to give themselves the constitution of 2010, they wanted to have a prestigious system of government. And Madam Speaker, in the prestigious setup, we don't have this position of leader of opposition. Therefore, what we are trying to create is a hybrid of trying to marry between the presidential and parliamentary system by bringing in the leader of opposition. And Madam Speaker, that also makes it another angle that that leader of opposition must be a member of parliament, the, lead, the official leader of opposition, which, Mr. Madam Speaker, I believe at the moment the leaders of opposition are outside of this house. And Madam Speaker, I believe that uh, in the presidential system, once the, the person who has won and has been uh, confirmed as the president, there's no position for official opposition. The parliament is there. The, the, the parliament will provide, uh, Madam Speaker, will provide oversight, and there's some other institution to do that. But Madam Speaker, having uh, looked at this, I think it is good maybe the, the Kenya is now to start looking at this issue properly, that the constitution is ripe for, for, for audit, so that we can now uh, look at the areas that are not working, and then we can enrich them by make, providing amendments. For example, this position of uh, creating the leader of official opposition is a good thing, Madam Speaker, that a leader of official opposition will provide that uh, leader, leadership in the oversight uh, proposal. The other thing, 